Easy peasy. You got it? Easy peasy. We're gonna do this face. Lots of little shapes. So we're gonna go back to our off-white chunky core and make some face shapes. So I'm gonna take, well, let me work right from the core so that I can tell you what I'm doing. I'm gonna take a, um, a four inch piece, which is about like the width of your hand and quarter it. On the round end of the Zoli tool, I'm gonna to make two little pillows. These are gonna be the eye bumps. Actually, let's quarter that because I feel like that's gonna be plenty or half that. So I just halved a quarter. So I'm just gonna go straight around. No crisscross, just straight around. Okay, we're just gonna set those aside. So those are our eye bumps. Then we're gonna make a chin. So we have that other quarter, stretch it out. And we're gonna use the Zuli tool to make the chin. So we're gonna go around the straight part one time. Then I'm gonna come up and do my angled wrap around the facet of it. Then I'm gonna go around the straight part and I'm gonna go up and do that. And then when I slide it off, I wanna stab, it has a kind of a direction it wants to curve. So I wanna take advantage of that. And I wanna stab this back in and make a really nice substantial rounded chin. They're little teeth. They have this funny kind of little kind of underbite and their bottom teeth are on their, um, their teeth are on the bottom. Like I don't think they have top teeth. <laughs> I looked up at Milo's making face. <laughs> making the goat face. Milo, you sort of have the goat face. Well. So, so it's very... Like, I really stabbed back and rounded this out. So it's nice and substantial. You need that substantial chin. So we still have a half of our four inch piece. So I want to split that in half this way. So now I have like two, two inch pieces. And I want to stack them into a nice square. So you might have to pull apart and restack to get it into a square. And then I wanna make two triangles, right angle triangles. This is a really, really tricky step for everybody. And I, I'm not sure how to, let's use the digit widget. Or no, let's, everybody probably has a ruler. So let's use the ruler to show. Maybe the dogs will not bark, <laughs> that'd be helpful. Um, I think it, people, it's hard to visualize a right angle, so we tend to make it um, too narrow, I'd say more than too wide. And then the other part of this step is you don't want to start your right angle way up on the tip here because that will give you a really wimpy point. You want to start your triangle back down so that this wool is coming into the triangle. Like when I start up here, only that much wool is coming in to the tip of the triangle. When I start it back here, all this wool is coming into the tip of the triangle. So I drew my center line. I'm gonna draw my right angle, set back from the edge, and then I'm gonna fold this in, and I'm gonna fold this in. And this is giving me a nice square corner. And I stab it just enough to make sure it's all Stuck together. And what that's going to be is the sheep's jaw. Goat. Goat. <laughs> Wait, we are making a I goat. swear I did not drink this morning. <laughs> um, you're on though, because goats do not have upper teeth. Okay. Shoo. They have, they have a <laughs> dental pad. Yeah. They're wacky. They're totally <laughs> wacky. And they have these funny little upper lips. And that's another one of the differences between sheep and goats. When you look at a sheep's upper lip, their dent, the philtrum is like 
deeper and more noticeable. And a goat, it still has it, but it's not, it doesn't have the dent as much. All right, so those are our two jaw pieces. Now, we're gonna make a muzzle, and the muzzle is gonna be this, this piece right here. Ignore this for now. And I like this little kind of darker, darker edge to it. So I'm gonna do that, and I left the chin white. Um, so this is a ghost we need to make on the, um, right on the felting surface. I'm gonna start with some Serafina white. I want a nice solid two inch square. So that was a wimpy one. So now I'm making it a nice, nice solid one. Cause this is a nice broad piece. And then I wanna use a little bit, I could use clay <laughs> if you still have some. You could use, you could steal a little bit of, oh wait, we still have some, I don't know if I want to go as dark as bark, as the dark gray. I want to go, I'm going to steal some of this medium gray from my gray goat. A little medium gray, a little bit of oatmeal. You want to get a nice kind of blended variation going, a little bit of clay. That looks good to me. I'm gonna put a little bit of white back over. When I say a little bit, it's like, it's like a thin kind of glaze. I'm gonna stab this a little bit just to make sure it doesn't move around. Excuse me. Turn it over, and I want to draw a ghost. So I'm going to stab the center line. Again, my ghost is going to start back from the edge so that I have something to fold over into it. And I'm making it about an inch wide, a little, little wider than an inch. Now I'm gonna use the stab lines to begin to fold my shapes in. You want the bulk of the wool up here, not like all back here. So that's how it's looking from the other side. Let's stab this a little bit, get it a little firmer but more of the shaping of it is gonna happen when I put it on. And I wanna leave this area all a little loose because I might need to like loosen it or manipulate it or move it. All right, the last component is the, they're little dangly bits. <laughs> I don't know what these are called. I didn't even know they had those. I know. Like, so this one I made with no beard, but those. <laughs> Mystery pieces. <laughs> and this one I made. It's a waddle. It's a waddle. I made with both. It's a fleshy protuberance. He's got fleshy protuberances. And mm -hmm. then the other one I think I made with a beard, but no waddle. So. Do what you want to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You need a tooth and a pick. <clears throat> I they, got it. I got it. They have absolutely no function. Isn't that weird? Do we believe these skin appendages well, my waddle. <laughs> are <laughs> evolutionary <laughs> remnants of a gland no longer needed? Okay. All right. I'll roll with that. I'm going to use the white. And I'm just making myself a thin strip. I guess each one needs about three inches, maybe. I don't know. I didn't write it down. I said two skewer neck things. That was my note. All right. We're going to use toothpick. So you just want to wrap 
however big you want your waddles to be. I never knew they existed. I'm going out and back like that. And I'm gonna stab it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do when I slide it off is stab this end back in on itself. All these proverbs, not a single one about a goat waddle being unnecessary. So I'm really trying to just round this end out. So this is fringy, so I can attach it. I can even like roll it in my hands a little bit. So. <laughs> there you go. There's your fleshy protuberance. I'd be careful Googling goat bits, just to... <laughs> Public service announcement. I got in big trouble in Goatland on the internet. I did not. I don't know how I got there. All I'm going to say is some people like goats. They like them a lot, huh? <laughs> okay. That's all our pieces. Let's put this thing together. Well, I'm gonna change my mind, but. So I said one is the eye bumps. You want your head to look like this. You want it to be a nice cone happening. So about this size. So the eye bumps are going to fold. So the rounded sides are side to side and the fringy sides are top and bottom. And you kind of want it to be a part of extension of this horn bump. And I'm gonna try and felt it into a little square. Shape. Wow, they look very large. They do? No, no, no. You really need a goat picture at this point because I'm giving you shapes, but you need to stab the shapes into everyone the right spot in shape everyone it will believe you because you're what they always come together but from an observer's <laughs> standpoint it, well, we're, these, we're entering alien phase these aren't the eyes these are the scully yeah like, it, it's alien phase yeah. all right so those are on fine that's all you need is to put them on the chin, we're going to tack on. You want it to stick off the end of the armature area a little bit because the lip is still going to go on there and they have an underbite. So the chin needs to stick off. So I just turn them upside down. Sorry, I'm not in the middle. And I just get that. Duck, mainly by felting the fringe and the rest of it is a little wobbly for now but it will get felted oh there's one more piece we didn't make yet but that's okay because I want you to see kind of where everything else goes first now we're gonna do the jaws so we have our two triangles I could have put some white um, top coat on here, but oh well. I'm gonna take a little bit of this fringe off so that I can see what I've got here. The right angle is the the jawbone. So the right angle is the jawbone of the skull. So that's where you want it, right here. And the fringe just travels up to the eye bumps and along the chin and over the So it's not on the neck, it's on the head, but it goes very close to the neck. A little extra fringe to come off. You really have this very triangular head going on. Oh, now what 
does he look like? <laughs> Sleestack. He looks like one of Max's demon faces. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We're going to put this nice upper lip on. It's nice and wide so I can fold it all the way around and shape it and make it the way I want it. I'm going to look at a picture. I really want this to come very much down. So I'm, I'm, I'm loosening this fringe up a little bit because I want it to kind of blend into the face. So for now, it's just going to stick off like this, but then, oh wait, I don't want it to stick off too, too much. I want it to be back here a little bit further. It's kind of lined up with the chin, but then when I felt it all in, it'll sink back a little bit. Really, I took a lot of fiber off of that ghost shape because it's, you just don't need it all, and I don't want it to bulk up everything else that's going on. So with this shape, you can shape the corner of the mouth using the fringe. Not have to do a second, second piece. I'm going to come underneath these jaws a little bit and get them a little tighter to the <laughs> So the last thing shape that I make is it's kind of like a nose it's going to get that nice nose that they have this part and then also a nose bridge and then it can even make a brow. But before we make it, let's let's figure out let's figure out where the eyes are going to be, and let's get this um, this dent properly. So I'm just trying to find the center and just make a little little dent, and then I want to I want to push all this down, like to kind of make like a bridge to the nose. But this next shape is going to add to that a lot. Just trying to get a little more definition here. And here. Okay, their eyes, this is something I learned that I was doing wrong. Their eyes are really high. <laughs> up on their head. I think I was putting them down here too much, but they're kind of like, they're farther back on their head than you think. I'm just looking for a good picture. Yeah, they're up there. Like way closer to where the horns start than you um, picture. I just realized that I was getting them more goat looking when I thought about getting this up higher. Okay. Yeah. And smaller than I usually I usually do so I'm using that poof that's under there to shape like kind of stab in you know this is where the eye is gonna go and then they get real skinny um, kind of along this the sides of their faces here so I would normally think about going down here but I need to go up and they kind of tilt down just a little bit. So with the needles, I'm making like sculpting basically. And I want to come from the top of the head as well. Sorry, it's a little weird angle, but. So this last shape, Let's get some black in there. But this last shape really contributes to the goatiness 
um, once we get it on. All right, so with the black core, you just wanna roll a tiny amount. I'm gonna take two pieces about like this, maybe an inch, inch and a half long. And lately, instead of using a toothpick, I've just been rolling in my fingers as much as I can to get a little, a little sphere. And then I want to stab that as circular as I can into that little dent I made. And to keep it circular, I come at the edges more than the center. Oh, now he's going through his skinned goat phase. Why is it hard to have a conversation with the goat? Um, I don't know why. The goat always butts in. <laughs> My goats did not butt me, which I'm very yeah happy about. They butted each other. Sometimes they're <laughs> ruthless. You were like, dang. You hear the horns clash. They would mostly... Yeah, sometimes, but like they would just like go after each other's bellies when they were eating. Like, just get out the way. Bam. All right, last piece is that long, it's a weird looking piece. It looks like this. Thank you. It looks like this. It's the nose, bridge of the nose and then flare. So we're gonna start with Serafina White. Kinda of like we laid out the muzzle. Then we're gonna get a little bit of oatmeal. And then a little bit of the medium gray from, from the gray goat side of things. Like, I just feel like, I don't know, that's a little dark. I still have a tiny bit of clay. I think I'll use that. I like the warmth of it. This Irish proverb, it's no use going to the goat's house to look for wool. I, I think that's sort of lame because there's very useful goat fiber yeah well I guess only some goats some goats I guess so this piece ended up about two inches by almost three but don't, don't get too that's don't get too too big so I'm going to draw that shape that I showed you. And what I'm thinking about is the length of the nose to where it would flare out over the eyes. And so I wanna make a nice little nose tip, nice little pointy nose tip. And then all of this is pretty tight. And then it kind of flares out Now there's a lot of wool in here, so I'm gonna give it a stretch. Okay. 
So this is going to go like this. It might be. And if yours is like huge or weird or you don't like it, just take it off and make another one. I feel like mine's a little bulky. So I'm going to sacrifice some of this so that I can get some of this bulk out of here because I put so much core wool in there. Okay. If I have to make, you know, you can't always make something in one piece. So if I have to make some brows, I will. So I just want to make sure my nose tip is lined up right. Sorry for my face. And then I can get a nice strong bridge of the nose with this piece. And then I have to decide what I'm doing with this. So they really get a good dent right here. Like their eyes really stick out a lot. I might not even have it enough yet. And then this I'm gonna pull off and get going on in between here. They often have an interesting color change here. So you can either like accentuate that or eliminate it. I think I'm going to try to um, accentuate it with a little bit of clay. So right where this little teardrop is off the eye. Just not, not so much a um, just like a color detail I guess oh my gosh but you you can do anything with what this with this stack of stuff we gave you like you could just be pure white a lot of them are pure white but find a photo for some inspiration some of them have um, a dish to their face some of them have more of a Roman nose and then this becomes a lot of stabbing. We still have more work to do to the eyes. I think they actually need quite a bigger, when you look at them from the front, um, he needs quite a bigger brow. I can do that on a skewer. I can do it on a toothpick. I can do it in my hand. I think I'll do it with oatmeal. And I want my piece to be about the width that I want the brow to be. Let's do a dub double decker taco. That's a good thing to learn. So I lay my strip out and I stab across about a third of the way down and turn that over. And then I stab about a quarter inch area and then I turn that back up. And so now I have a substantial little rounded area and some fringe and that makes a really nice brow. But double decker tacos are so useful, like it can be any number of things. So this one's a little smaller than this one. So I can either remake it or I can see which eye needs needs more. Let's see, I'll do it this way. And then I might need a little more eyeball, and that's okay. Gotta get everything right here. What do you call a goat that knows martial arts? Oh, jeez. 
I don't know what. A Karate Kid. Okay, so I'm going to bring the eyeball out more. It just really needs to protrude from the head more. But what I have to be careful of is that the eyeball doesn't get big, really big. So I'm going to make another one. I'm going to tuck it in here and then I might have to make a lower lid. Next we'll make ears. Forgot about the little ears. There we go. I went up a little higher. And so then if I can make a lower lid. Serafina, wait for that. I am. That's what I'm using. I can use, I can use a lot of different things. I lost my little clay detail, but that's okay. That looks better to me, sticking out like that more. 